Hello, I'm Prick the Cactus. Halloween is coming up soon, and you know what that means. Candy and ghosts and goblins, and the scariest of all, children. You get to catch up on all the great horror movies you may have missed, as I plan to in upcoming videos. But you know the best part about Halloween nowadays? No, it's not getting drunk and scaring the little brats away with a real kitchen knife. Every year there's a new, controversial Halloween costume that flips everyone's moral panic switches in some dusty little corner of eBay or Amazon. This year it's Anne Frank, who you'll recall was a character from a popular 50s sitcom about a lovely Jewish family who find themselves in all kinds of wacky shenanigans. I'm kidding. People don't even have the words to respond to this Anne Frank Halloween costume. Oh my god. This of all things. Pe people are speechless. Have no words. This, the description reads, Now your child can play the role of a World War II hero. Now in real life, Anne Frank was a child writer who lived in dire circumstances. Is she a hero? Well... She didn't really save anyone. They all kind of died at the end as far as her story is concerned. But I think a case can be made in the face of adversity, historical importance. Trust me, if Anne Frank's mad about anything, it's not about a little girl dressing up as her. It's that some pervert picked up her fucking diary from the ashes in the first place and published it without her consent. Flipping through the pages about her first period? Gee, ain't that a history lesson for the children? I'm sure that's exactly what he was thinking, right? Now, why can't kids dress up as heroes? Who are they supposed to dress up as? Hitler? I see no problem with either. Either way, the kid who comes to my door with the most outlandish costume wins the whole bowl of candy. They can dress up as Muhammad, Hitler, Stalin, Mao, the Vegas shooter, Bugs Bunny, or a purple strap-on. I do not discriminate based on evil. I just want to see the effort. Stop politicizing cosplay. As long as kids are doing it, fine. But when adults do it, it's deeply disturbing. Tell me which is creepier, and don't fucking lie, because I can tell when you're lying. A kid dressed as Hitler... Or an adult dressed as a baby. Both are expressing themselves, but one is crying and smells like shit. Does that mean that babies are worse than Hitler? Well, for me, it's a close call, but there's no doubt that babies have rarely killed Jews. Maybe a couple. On the other hand, Hitler has never ruined a movie for me. I've never been sitting in a theater and heard, Wah! Who's that? Oh, it's Hitler again. I should have fucking known. Quit following me or I'll file a restraining order. Get your parents to fucking shut you up. But this is Anne fucking Frank we're talking about. If any girl or boy, because it's 2017, decides to go trick-or-treating as Anne Frank, and you're too guilt-ridden over a history you had no part in, and you want to show how pro-Israel you are, why don't you try starving yourself for several months in striped pajamas with no shoes, strip naked, and throw yourself in an oven until you're burned down to your gold fillings? Prove to us evil Nazis how much you understand her pain. Haven't skeletons always been a part of the Halloween tradition anyway? I mean, you decorate your windows with them. Dress up as one. See what I give a fuck. Aren't Jews also a costume? I'm kidding. I mean... Now, you're already letting your kid put holes in his teeth. Being politically incorrect can't be that much worse of a moral trespass. Just be relieved it's not a slutty Anne Frank Halloween costume with all the seemingly benign faces they've sexualized over the years. And if this costume truly represented a Holocaust victim, shouldn't the costume come equipped with a gold star? Maybe that's sold separately. What else? I saw... Patton Oswalt's new Netflix comedy special, Annihilation. Anyone who's familiar with his work expected that he would take a darker, more personal turn that would distinguish this hour from his others. And he did. This was exactly what I expected from a broken shell of a man. But not a comic. And I hate to say it, folks. It's not funny. That's the truth. 
Gone is the wit and the whimsy, the ebullient wordplay, the Uncle Touchy's naked puzzle basement level of brilliance we've come to expect of Oswald's over the years. I understand that he's gone through a great loss and personal tragedy, and I appreciate that he's candid enough with his audience to address it. But his sorrow ultimately overcomes a sense of humor, and kind of descends into preachiness by the end. Comedians are the only people who should never allow themselves to go soft in their old age, at least not on stage. The persona may evolve to suit the times and explore new territory, but the comedian must remain on the cutting edge of the blade, sharp and deadly. Oswald's blade has dulled significantly over the time, similar to the late Ralphie May. The opening 20 or so minutes of Annihilation are the best, and they're about, who you guessed it, Trump. How fresh is that? That should give you an idea of how far Patton is willing to reach for new material nowadays. It's all downhill from there. His crowd work bit is subpar at best, and his anecdotes lack the anarchy of his earlier work. I'm sorry that Patton is still so emotionally distressed by his loss, more so than most comedians probably would be. Maybe this is an unfair comparison, but when George Carlin's first wife passed away, he followed it up with perhaps the edgiest and sharpest special of his career, You Are All Diseased. He got funnier, not lazier. He defied the notion that age ripens you like a banana until you turn into mush. Instead, age like whiskey, or Marissa Tomei. In the throes of agony and defeat, as artists, we have an obligation to become bolder and more daring than ever. And Patton doesn't have that daring in him. He's, his every movement in the special is a fallback onto the audience, a desperate plea for sympathy. If not vanity, then a complacency in knowing that we have to laugh. Because he's come advertised as a comic, but he wants to talk about his personal problems. Well, guess what, Patton? Everybody loses everybody they love every single day. It doesn't make you special. It doesn't make you funny. It makes you look like the joke, especially if your jokes are duds. Now, you can talk about anything you like, but the jokes must come first. His jokes do not reveal anything deep and true about the human condition. They have a surrealist touch, but not the magic. This is not a meditation on the subjects of love and death. The truest words he speaks are those of his dead wife. Life is chaos, be kind. These words in themselves are universal, but the way Patton inserts them seems forced and not related to anything else. We never get a funny story about who his wife was or any other perspective, just a heavy load of self-pity. I wouldn't mind this if it was tempered by more jokes and flights of fancy, but this isn't funny. It's not even written well enough to be a great dramatic performance. Keep in mind, I really, really wanted to like this. Patton Oswalt has always been one of my favorite comedians, but this special is not what the best comedians are made of. The jokes must always come first, and sadly, it seems Patton has forgotten this. I'm not a hater, I'm just a fan who was sorely disappointed. If you disagree with me, you can send me death threats in the comments. And that's what made me rage today. Here's a sneak preview of the next episode. Hello, I'm Prick the Cactus. Until next time, stay salty, you bottom feeding cunts. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to support me and what I do, the best thing you can do for me subscribe, share this content, and check out the links below for more. Who's making money off this shit anymore, anyway? Not you, not me. Some fucking evil corporation. I'll be setting up a Patreon soon, but for now, no monetary encouragement, just a simple sub and share will do. Ciao.